good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. We are so glad that you have joined us for this memorial gathering for our beloved friend, Sohaib Sultan. My name is Allison Bowden, and I serve as the Dean of Religious Life and of the Chapel at Princeton University. Sohaib has served for the last 13 years with such distinction as our first Muslim chaplain at Princeton. We have a cherished tradition in our Office of Religious Life, which is when there has been a death in our campus community, we gather the community together right away that evening, maybe the next evening, depending on the timing, to bring the people together just for an unprogrammed time to be together, to keep silence together, to support one another in our shared sorrow and grief. And that is the practice that we are inhabiting today in a very different way uh, here in this virtual world. Again, thank you for joining us. We will soon have uh, a Quranic recitation. Then we will have reminiscences shared by several members of the campus Muslim community. A prayer will be offered. Then we'll move into a time of silence that we will keep all together. Following that, we'll have an opportunity to go into breakout rooms so that we can be in a smaller setting and have more of an opportunity to share ourselves of our love and our memories of Sohaib. Again, thanks for joining us. I'm going to hand things over now to Sabrina Mirza. Sabrina is the assistant to the Muslim chaplain at Princeton and we'll be introducing our speakers. Thank you, Dean Allison. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Greetings of peace and blessings, my dear brothers and sisters in faith and in humanity. This is how Imam Suhaib would always greet us. I want to thank you all for being here. Undoubtedly, Imam Suhaib has touched each of you in special ways. And this is really, as Dean Allison said, going to be a space for you to share more. And um, we just want to offer the space for you to be able to do that. For that, we have a short program. Um, I'm really grateful to be able to share a space with people who love Imam Sahib deeply. So we'll begin first with the Quranic recitation and the verses that will be recited are first the opening chapter of the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha, followed by the last three verses of Surah Zumar, which is chapter 39, and then the last four verses of chapter 89, Surah Fajr. And these particular verses are what Imam Sohaib had recited at the prayer gathering for Zoya Shuaib, a dear Princeton student class of 2020, who also passed away from cancer just a few short months ago in December. So he had recited these verses then and he had asked me to uh, read the translation in English after each set of the three chapters. And so we all know how thoughtful and deliberate Imam Sahib is in everything that he chooses. So I have a feeling that these are verses that he would like to be recited today. So with that, I want to invite to recite in Arabic, our sister Maryam Konhochich of the Princeton class of 2023. And to offer the English translation, I'd like to invite Yusra Said who prior to me served as the assistant to Imam Sohaib for three years. May, I, may God bless her and reward her for all of her service. So let me spotlight them now. I invite Yusra and Maryam to join. Sister Maryam. There she is. All right. Sorry, my internet dropped for a bit. Um, Salaikum, everyone. It's so nice to see you all. Um, so, should I start? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajeem Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen 
الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. Praise be to God, Lord of the worlds, the compassionate, the merciful, master of the day of judgment. You we worship and from you we seek help. Guide us upon the straight path, the path of those whom you have blessed, not of those who incur wrath, nor of those who are astray. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن وسيق الذين اتقوا ربهم إلى الجنة زمرا حتى إذا جاءوها وفتحت أبوابها وقال لهم وقال لهم خزنتها سلام عليكم سلام عليكم لوها خالدين وقالوا الحمد لله الذي صاقنا وعده وأورثنا الأرض وأورثنا الأرض نتبوأ من الجنة حيث نشاء فنعم أجر العاملين وترى الملائكة حافين من حول العرش يسبحون بحمد ربهم وقضي بينهم بالحق وقيل الحمد لله رب العالمين Those who were mindful of their Lord will be led in throngs to the garden. When they arrive, they will find its gates wide open and its keepers will say to them, Peace be upon you. You have done well. Come in. You are here to stay. And they will say, Praise be to God, who has kept his promise to us and given us this land as our own. Now we may live wherever we please in the garden. How excellent is the reward of those who labor. You will see the angels surrounding the throne, glorifying their Lord with praise. True judgment will have passed between them, and it will be said, Praise be to God, the Lord of the worlds. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة ارجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي O oh, you soul at peace, return unto your Lord, pleased and well pleasing. Enter among my servants, enter my garden. Thank you so much, Miriam, for that really beautiful recitation, and Yusra for offering the English translation. Uh, such beautiful verses and so uh, relevant to the experience of the most peaceful and beautiful passing that we saw in the beautiful sounds, signs surrounding Imam Sahib's passing. So thank you for that. I next want to invite to offer some short reflections an alumni, I'm sorry, an a PhD student, current PhD student who is studying at Princeton and who also did his undergrad at Princeton, Wasim Shiliwala, a close and dear friend of Imam Sahib. So I'd like to invite him to offer a few words. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, there, there are no words for this occasion, subhanAllah. Um, I'd written something before, which some of you may have seen, um, but 
what comes to mind now, I want you to share two glimpses of who Imam Sahib was in this world and in um, another realm. Um, I remember one time at the Mizan camp, which we would do, um, this is a few years ago, and <laughs> we, it was after Fajr and people were getting, and after breakfast and we, people were getting ready for classes, but um, some people had some, you know, a break thing. So Imam had gone to go and take a little nap and um, he was sleeping in the, in the, in, uh, on his bed um, in the lodge where everybody was staying. And then me and one of my friends were going to go take a shower. Um, and then, and, and, and he's, he's in this sleeping state and um, he calls out to me or he actually calls out. He says, oh, Fias, are you there? And alhamdulillah, I was lucky because Fias was taking a shower. So then, no, no, it's me, it's Wasim. And he's like, oh, Wasim, come here. And again, he's, he's sleeping. He's like in his sleeping bag. He's like huddled up um, like a baby in a, in a cradle or in like a wrapped up. And he's, he, he, he's like, oh, Wasim, come here. And I ask him, oh, is, every, is everything okay? Is there anything you want? He then said, Wasim, do you know how, have you ever, have you ever ridden a camel? And I'm like, yeah, you know, one time before, like I was in Morocco a few years before and I had the opportunity to ride on a camel. He was like, yeah. So you know how when you get on a camel, when you first get on the camel, it, you know, it, it raises up and it sort of like comes at this angle and you feel like it's about to throw you off. And I said, yeah. And he said, this is what life is like. That's what the dunya is like. Um, and so finally, like such a profound way to think about the world. And the funny thing is that he has no recollection of telling this to me. Um, we told him afterwards and then he's like, yeah, I don't remember saying any of this. He said this, this was, it was his heart speaking, trying to teach us something. And subhanAllah, that's, you know, who knows the crazy things we all say when we're sleeping? <laughs> and this is what he says. <laughs> like, subhanAllah, that's what Suhaib was. And then the second thing I wanted to mention was um, a dream that I had had about a year ago, um, or maybe a little less than that. It was a few months after the diagnosis had come out. And in this dream, um, I was sleeping on my bed and I woke up and I looked out the window and there were these birds and they started coming inside um, the room. And I'm like, no, no, this, you know, this is um, uh, like, you know, you shouldn't be here. Like you're going to get stuck in here. So I started taking the birds and like, like putting them outside the window. Um, and then I saw that under my bed, and perhaps this is what was bringing all the birds in, there's a, a copy of the Quran. It was ornate. Um, it had, it looked like a combination for those of you who um, are aware of like the different types of Qur'ans out there, a combination of the study Qur'an and Thomas Cleary's Qur'an translation and Abdul Halim's uh, Qur'an translation. Um, so, and it was like, but it looked exquisite and looked ornate. And I picked it up as I was holding it, I could hear Imam Sahib's voice. Um, and it was him, and what I heard was not, you know, him giving some khutbah or some lecture. It was him, like, joking around with some students, the way he would after Juma, you know, just sort of, you know, the corny jokes he would make, <laughs> that, you know, just to, you know, just to um, connect with everybody, go make everybody happy. We all laugh, you know, twice. We laugh at the joke, and we also laugh at, laugh at how corny the joke was. <laughs> um, but subhanAllah, like, that's, um, that image stuck with me because it's, reminded me of this is who Imam Sohaib is. You know, he's like my understanding of that dream and a lot of them is that, you know, the Sohaib, Sohaib was the Quran. And it's not just any Quran. He took the best from what, you know, this American tradition has to offer. You know, the academic, you know, miss of, you know, the study Quran with all its depth, all its commentary, the, um, you know, the eloquence, and the accuracy of, you know, the, the translation by Abdul Halim, and then also the, the spirituality and the, the openness of Thomas Cleary's translation. You know, so Habe had captured the secrets of all three 
and he and the way he spread it was through the way he just talked to people you know subhanallah um you know that's um you know those are the two things i just wanted to share two memories because they captured who i think you know i mean it's hard to capture who Sohib was um but in any case you know i'm here um um I'm here with Soheb, alhamdulillah, and, you know, if I just want to let you all know that he's with us in this gathering, um, whether it's, you know, here at the cemetery, um, but also he's with all of us, he's in our hearts. Um, and, you know, even though you may not know it, he's, you know, he's spending some of his time, some of the time that Allah gives him to go and see the world, he's coming to visit you because he cares and loves each and every one of you. And he's checking in on you. and He's, he's singing those gentle breezes. Um, so, you know, and never doubt that. I want to just say that, never doubt that. If, it's, if you see him in a dream, if you hear his voice while you're awake, if you feel him in your heart, if you feel him even right in this moment, as I'm sure many of you are, that he's with you, that's, that's real, that's him. You know, he's coming to send you greetings. He's coming to tell you that, you know, he's, he's happy. And subhanAllah that, you know, he's, he's able He's even more joyous because he's able to do more now with the resources that Allah has given than you know he was able to do for you know with the university resources and things like that. <laughs> because once you leave your earthly body, you know the ruach can go wherever it wants. And subhanAllah. So inshallah, um, I just want to end by um, showing you for those of you who weren't able to attend, this is his gravesite. And subhanAllah, um, some of the people who have been gathered here. Um, including our beloved Imam of um, This Again, these things aren't planned, but you know, none of this was planned, subhanAllah. And yet, um, so he brought us all together, even in life as in death, with such beauty. So, Jazakum Khair, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Thank you so much, Wasim, for bringing Imam Sohib into this space with us and for reminding us that if he's in his, in our hearts, he's gone nowhere. Um, he's still with us, alhamdulillah. So um, thank you so much for sharing those stories and reflections. I now want to invite an alumni of Princeton, class of 2018, a dear beloved sister to Imam Sohib, our sister Natasha Siddiq, to offer a few reflections. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It's really a blessing to be here um, and to hear uh, these beautiful reflections and to have so many more that have been shared, not just in the past few days, but over the months and the years. It's amazing how if there are two people who have ever encountered Imam Sahib in their life, if they meet and they realize that they both met Imam Sahib, for sure the conversation is going to go towards how mashallah incredible he is, how amazing he has been in their lives and how much we wish to be more like him. For me and for many of us, Imam Sahib was, you know, a person who carried many roles for a lot of us. He was a confidant. He was a source of calm and sincere advice in times of spiritual, emotional and psychological pain and discomfort and uncertainty. He was the calm when all seemed to fall apart. He was a laugh that lowered your guard and made you smile. He was a contemplative, mm, subhanAllah, to the things that you were saying. He was an ever pleasant smile, a steady gaze and a companionable silence. He was goofiness and humor, even at his expense. And he was so much more. And my memories of him center around a lot of the time being in Murray Dodge with him as a student and even when I would visit, I would walk into the building and climb the creaking stairs with my ear attuned to hearing his voice coming from his office or the sound of his recitation from the masala upstairs and instantly looking forward to whatever conversation we would have and the warmth that I would receive. And one of the hardest things is knowing that I will never feel that again, that I may wish for it, but it won't come true in the way that I'm used to. But like Wasim said, he has not left us in the fullest sense, but he is with us in a profound and truly more encompassing sense than he's ever been before. So I try to imagine how 
he might advise us to find or even become the same kind of support and guidance that he's been for us for one another. Like if I could sit and talk to him right now, I wonder what he would tell me. And just some of the things that came to mind were to always ask people how they're doing and to not stop at just good or fine, but to really be concerned about their inner state and to share your own with them as an opening for greater understanding. Also to never let anyone leave your company feeling like a stranger, but rather invite them back as a cherished friend. To contemplate often and with others who will challenge and deepen your understanding of the richness of this life and the next. To let your tongue, your heart, and your mind be in constant praise and remembrance, because that is what's going to nourish you and guide you. And finally, that you are never alone. There's so much more wisdom than this that he's imparted to all of us, and I couldn't even pretend to capture all of it. I don't even know all of it the, until I'm sure in the years to come, we'll all return to his words and be struck by how beautifully they meet the situations we're facing. And even more so remind us that Allah is all seeing and all hearing, the one who knows us better than anyone else. Imam Sahib, in his own wonderful way, spent this past year not only preparing himself for his return, but preparing us for his return. He still poured his energy into sharing his difficulties, the highs and the lows with us, uplifting our spirits with his presence, with his reflections, with his time, urging us to deepen our love for the Quran and the Prophet, and to see Allah's presence and his hand in all aspects of our lives. Little by little, he tried to impart the same peace he was feeling with us. And as his community, that is what I hope will carry us forward and never leave us. A sense of welcome and peace, a pursuit of joy, the ever-loving awareness that we are protected and we are walking this path to a blessed and eternal life. Truly, Allah is the most merciful, the ever-merciful. I want to end on just one thing that's been coming to mind a lot whenever I think of Imam Sahib is that I hear his voice reciting the words from our peace meditations with Dean Matt, his voice lifting with each word, blissful in the peace of his Lord. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam. I hear him saying that now, truly at peace and now reunited with his Lord, whom we love so much. And that's the most beautiful thing. And that is what's giving me strength now. And I hope gives us all strength um, now and in whatever life we have to come and allows us to be there with him one day soon to say the same together in Allah's presence. Sakala Claire. Thank you, so much, Natasha, for this beautiful, heartfelt words and bringing to mind all of these really important feelings that we all have when we think of Imam Sahib's voice and the peace that he gave to us. Um, alhamdulillah. With that, I want to now invite our dear beloved Imam Adeyinka Mendez, who is very dear to our Imam Sohaib, a dear friend, mentor, and colleague, to offer a reflection and a prayer. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, peace be upon you all. And the grace of God, the divine reality, and his blessings uh, to all my brothers and sisters in, as Imam Suhaib used to say, in faith and in humanity. Uh, I, um, I thank all of you that have already spoken. And uh, I just want to share a few words before I offer a prayer. Uh, Imam Suhaib uh, Sultan, may God have mercy on him and elevate the station of his soul and of his spirit always. Uh, he was a teacher. He was a shepherd. Um, in essence, I mean, he, he was many things. He was a father. He was a husband. He was 
a brother, he was an author, he was an imam, he was a chaplain. Uh, but in essence, he was, he was a teacher and he was a shepherd. And this past year, in the midst of a global pandemic, God chose him to show us how to die with grace and how to die with, with, with courage, how to die with faith, how to die with trust, how to die with honor, how to die with love. And those of you who are watching and listening who had the privilege to spend his final days, his final weeks uh, in his company, know that he also taught us how to die with joy, with happiness. About uh, two weeks before this uh, blessed month of Ramadan that we're in now, uh, Imam Suhaib and his team of oncologists uh, decided to stop his uh, treatment and to only focus on managing the pain, the unspeakable pain the, uh, that he was being tested with, but prepared as well as one of my friends, uh, who was also a colleague of Dr. of, of Imam Suhaib Sultan, Dr. Nuri Freelander, uh, who served in chaplaincy at Harvard, said just a few nights ago that you know, he and Imam Suhaib were talking about the, the, the death anniversary of the great Sufi poet and scholar, Muslim scholar Rumi, America's best-selling poet. And every year, December 17th in Konya, Turkey, they celebrate what's called the wedding night of Rumi, Shabi Arus, the wedding night. And around the Muslim world, the Persian Muslim speaking Muslim world, the death anniversaries of saints and sages are celebrated as their wedding nights. And Imam Suhaib loved this. It gave him tremendous consolation. And he looked forward to his wedding night, the night when God would take his soul and he would finally be reunited with the one who Prophet Muhammad, God bless him and grant him peace, referred to as the most exalted companion, Ar-Rafiq al-A'la. Ar-Rafiq is the one who walks with you on your journey. And so Imam Suhaib was, the closer he got to the day of his death, you could see his body getting weaker, but you could see the radiance of his face, the radiance of his smile only glowing and growing more. And so we thank God for, for this opportunity to learn from him. And uh, finally, uh, before I offer a short prayer, I just wanted to say that you know, over the past uh, few weeks and, and definitely the past uh, 24 hours, you know, many of many people have been mentioning how gentle Imam Suhaib was and how kind he was and and he was all those things. He was kind and he was gentle and he was sweet. But I want us to remember that he was also strong. He was also powerful. He was also brave. He was fearless. And the, the Muslim life program that he established, uh, the way that he held us with compassion and strength outside of the walls of Princeton, in his home and in the streets, in the mosques, he dared to push the envelope. He dared to show us what it's possible for Islam, for religion, in general, to look like and feel like in a secular world, an increasingly secular world, an increasingly nihilistic world. He went against the grain on many occasions. He did things that some imams and some chaplains would never even dream of 
because of what might be said or what people will think. And so along with that sweetness that we remember him for, know that he was a lion. He was a laughing lion, smiling lion, who God had chosen to show us what Islam could look like in America, what religion could look like in America, and what America can look like in Islam, right? What America can look like within religion. And so we thank him for that and so many other things that have already been mentioned. And with that, uh, you know, so much more can be said, um, but we will close with a short prayer. We seek the blessing and the help of the all encompassing name of God, Allah, Ar Rahman, the most loving, Ar Rahim, the eternally merciful. We ask that God send eternal blessings and perfect peace upon our beloved teacher, our spiritual guide, our leader, Muhammad, and upon all of the prophets, all the messengers, Adam and Noah and Abraham and Moses and Jesus Christ, the son of Mary and the great sages, Krishna and Buddha and those who follow them, who believed in the oneness of the creator we ask that you bless this gathering and make it a source of joy, source of peace, source of happiness for the soul of our brother, Imam Suhaib Sultan, the source, a source of, of solace for the soul of our leader, our teacher, our mentor, our father, our, our comrade, Suhaib Sultan. We ask that you have mercy on his soul. We ask that you always elevate his rank and his station. We ask that you grant him a grave that is a heavenly meadow, that is filled with light and with love and with the presence of angels. We ask that you enter him into the highest heaven Firdaus, without reckoning and without suffering. Let the last breath that he took in this earthly life, O oh God, through all of your names, we ask that you make that the end of his suffering. O oh God, O oh Allah, we ask you through all of your names to surround, surround his blessed, honorable wife, Arshi, and his parents and his child, Radia, and all of his family with love and support. We ask that you surround his children, his students, those who kept his company and learned from him all the time that he was at Princeton and before that and outside of Princeton. We ask that you you, you surround them with love and support in this time of sorrow. And we ask, oh God, that you one day reunite us with him in a world that is better than this world, in company that's better than the company of this world. We ask that you give us success to continue his legacy and his work all the days of our lives. And we pray for the weak and we pray for the oppressed. We pray for the poor. We pray for the vulnerable. We pray for those who are forgotten, that we are a means with our prayers, with our wealth, with our energy, with our strength, with our power, with our influence to alleviate and remove what we can of their suffering in our lifetimes. We pray through you who are called and invoked by many names in many languages, 
who reveals himself in ever new ways to whomever he chooses through the blessings of Surat al-Fatiha. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi rahman rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahman rahim Maliki yawm al-deen. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. Ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqeem. Sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين In the name of God, the most loving, the most compassionate, all praise and thanks belong to God, the nurturing master of all beings, the guardian and sustainer of all beings, the most loving, the most compassionate, sovereign ruler of the day of reward, guide us along the straight path. You alone do we serve and you alone do we ask for help. Guide us along the straight path, the path of those whom you've blessed, not those upon, not those who have incurred wrath, or those who have gone astray. Amen. Thank you so much, Imam Mendez, for those really powerful, moving reminders and that beautiful dua that Wasim allowed us to pray together over the grave of our beloved Imam Sahib. Um, I wasn't planning to, to share anything, but I just wanted to just share one verse of the Quran that when I read it, it's one of my favorite verses. I think of Imam Sahib. It's the second to last verse in Surah Tawbah in 128. And I'll just read the English translation. Um, Indeed, a messenger has come unto you from among yourselves. It's hard for him all that you have suffered. He is keen about you, and he is full of tenderness and mercy to the believers. And it just reminds me so much of how much concern he had, deep, deep concern, and uh, this, the blessing of being able to witness that level of concern that he, that a person can have for so many people in his heart that we're just so blessed to have experienced that. Um, so I wanna thank everyone who shared reflections and I'm really looking forward to hearing from all of the people who are tuning in in the smaller gathering. For now, I want to now uh, turn it over to Dean Matt who will hold a, a, a space of silence for Imam Sahib. Friends, please allow your eyes to close. Give your body permission to be still and soft. Allow your mouth and your lips and your tongue to be still but soft. Allow your heart to be soft and tune into the silence in your heart and the silence that we are sharing together for our beloved friend. Just for a few breaths together.
We will now be moving into the time for our breakout rooms. And we will be posting in the chat right now the link that will take you there. Uh, we hope you will be able to join us in these smaller spaces so that we can continue to share our memories of our beloved Sohabe, of all that he did for us and all that he was as a person to us. Thank you again so much for being a part of this gathering today. And thank you, thank you for your love and care for Sohabe.